What's the word, y'all? This is not a word I throw out there lightly, y'all. If you've been around the town, you know this word is not used regularly. But today, we got a vintage James Harden performance. I think that in sports, we throw the word vintage around so much. Um, like, I remember any time Derrick Rose did a scoop layup, they were saying Vince. Oh, perfect example is today. Jeff Green threw down a monster dunk in their game versus the Suns tonight, and they were vintage Uncle Jeff. And I'm like, Jeff Green dunks the ball like that like twice every 10 games. It can't really be vintage if he's still doing it. James Harden had a vintage game. He had 45 points. And it made me think, when was the last time we saw James Harden drop 45 in a game? Here's the answer. August 12th. 2020 that was the last time we saw james harden drop a 45 or above game today's video is brought to you by prize picks hit the link in the description download the prize picks app and use go kenny so they can match your deposit up to 100 dollars for new players prize picks is daily fantasy that is just you versus the numbers you pick some of your favorite or least favorite players you pick something like points rebounds assists look at the number and you decide if the player is going to have more or less than that number the playoffs are here and prize picks has been doing a lot of promos just a couple days ago, you missed out on the free square, which was Steph Curry, 0 0.5 points. He had 50. So free space. If you if you would have been here, you would have been able to use it. But there's more to come. So I'm going to put together a little fake entry just to show you how easy it is. Boom, 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 right? We go to our four players. I think Book might have a good game. I think Jokic's going to have a good game. Actually, everybody's having a good game. It's going to be a firefight. And I get to pick between flex play and power play. Power play means that I must hit four for four for my entry to give me 10x. And then flex play means that I can still get out at 1.5x if one of them misses. A lot of different opportunities. Hit the link in the description down with the Price Picks app and use Code Candy so they can match your deposit up to $100. Definitely, definitely vintage. And when you consider the stakes, this is one of the greatest individual James Harden playoff performances of all time. Um, I even asked Twitter because I, I, I was in the moment and I was trying to remember like the biggest James Harden playoff moments. And Twitter definitely reminded me. And, and some not so great ways. I was genuinely asking a question because I was caught up in the moment. Yeah, I forgot about 2012 when he got the, the shot against the Spurs. But I was thinking about like the prime version of himself. The one in Houston and the one post-Houston. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, he's got this performance, 45-point game, including a game-winning shot practically. And then he's got the block on Lou Dort in the bubble, which was a great moment. And then again, he's got the, the shot against the Spurs. And in those games, the stakes are slightly higher. Maybe not slightly. I mean, James, the James Harden block happened in the Game 7. But this one, considering all the things that's going on in this series, was huge. They took home court advantage. They were a 10-point underdog. I just re-looked it. They were a 10-point underdog. No Joel Embiid. We still don't know if he's going to be healthy for Game 2. This is a game the Boston Celtics win or should win 100% of the time. There is no excuses to lose to the 76ers without Joel Embiid, especially when you consider the way their defense looked in the first quarter. JB, Tatum, everybody was getting to the lane at will at will and I, I even made a tweet like they get into the rim and it's, it's about as easy as can be without having Joel and B back there on the on the back line I thought this was about to be a quick easy game for the Boston Celtics get to the basket anytime you want to lay it up dunk it whatever but the 76ers stayed in that game even though the Celtics were shooting like some crazy like 70% from the field in the first quarter we saw D'Anthony Melton come off the bench and give them big minutes when they needed them and of course James Harden started off this game with like 12 straight points so we knew from the very first quarter he was going to be on the heater and he kept them in this game long enough for the Celtics to do something that they've been doing a lot this season which is collapse in the last couple minutes of the game again this is this is a game that you have no business losing considering there's no Joel and B. Maxie was great. Of course, Harden was great. Anthony Melton gave quality minutes. B-Ball Paul made four of the clutchest free throws of his entire career, and none of them hit the backboard. None of them hit the rim. They were all swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. 75% free throw shooter for, us, uh, for this season for B-Ball Paul, and that's an uptick from the last couple years. So shout out to him, man. Clutch, clutch free throws. But I want to give the praise to the 76 for winning this game because – they're in the series. They took home court advantage, which is crazy to think about. But ultimately, the, the Celtics fumbled heavily. Matt had a very good tweet. The Celtics really shot almost 60% from the field, 40% from three, 94% from the line at home and lost. Now, this was one of a quicker game because there was not a lot of free throws, but still, they shot nearly 60% from the field and 40% from three and lost a game at home. At the end of the Atlanta series, I walked out of that thinking, oh, the Atlanta Hawks really surprised me. They looked better throughout the course of the series 
than I ever imagined. And maybe they could use that to come into next season with a little bit of, I don't know, confidence or whatever. Obviously, they lost the series. And, and maybe I'm rethinking that. Maybe the Atlanta Hawks didn't impress me, but instead, the Boston Celtics are just different. Last year, on that second half of the year, when they really went on a big-time run, it was hanging their hat on the defensive side of the ball. We talk about it all the time. In the second half of the season, they were the best defensive team almost of all time. I had to go back in some of their series from last year, and you can see uh, what the scores were. I mean, they gave up 118 points here, but for the most part, this entire series, they were clamping up. I mean, a game ended like, like this in today's game, a 109-103 is considered a low-scoring game. You know what I'm saying? And for the entirety of their playoff run in the second half of the season, they had been clamping up. Here it is against the Bucs. They held the Bucs to under 100 points one, two, three different times in a seven-game series. The last five games of the Atlanta series, they gave up, gave up 120, 117, 121, 130, 130, and then 106, and then tonight, 119. So the identity has changed just like that, where it's more of an offensive thing, and they were the number two offensive basketball behind the Sacramento Kings, so it's fair, but but you, you need both of them. And you don't have to be holding teams to under 100 points no more, but definitely can't be giving up 130 points to the Atlanta Hawks, or 120 points to a team that didn't have maybe, probably, the league MVP playing. Think about that. The league MVP is on the sideline, and you still gave up 120 points. And the one play that sums up the, <laughs> the entire game was the play where they don't recognize how much time is on the clock. It's going down to zero seconds practically on the shot clock, and they throw it, and Tyrese Maxey gets an easy lay or dunk or whatever. Um, so it's, it has not been pretty. The good thing about it, Boston, is that, of course, it's a seven-game series, so you need to get your lick back. But, I mean, I'm sure there's somewhat optimism that Joel Embiid is going to come back and now the game plan changes a little bit I would like to see if Joel Embiid is not back in game two that that the drop coverage from Al Horford or whoever it may be is completely gone because James Harden killed you on that all game long that's enough about this game let's go talk about the other game so I said all first round that the Denver Nuggets uh, playoffs does not start until the end of the first round and now they're in the second round. And I didn't even get to talk about game number one. My apologies. Uh, uh, Jamal Murray had an amazing performance. They killed on the glass. They did pretty much everything correctly and, and blew the boys out of the water. Today, we just saw uh, Jamal Murray have a stinker of a game. A stinker of a game. Didn't matter. Typically, the games where we see Nikola Jokic have to go out there for 35-plus points, they don't really equate to wins because it changes the entire play style of the Denver Nuggets. Today, he had nearly 40, 16, and 5, but he had other people step up. And honestly, the other person that I'm thinking about, I didn't even realize, had two points on the night. Christian Brown. Chris, Christian Brown woke up this morning not knowing that he was going to have to guard Kevin Durant probably and then did it and did it well. Imagine telling Christian Brown when he was in the national championship game, whenever that was, that in the year's time, you're going to be guarding Kevin Durant in a pretty high stakes game. You're going to do a pretty damn good job. I wonder if he would have believed you. Christian Brown has been one of the better rookies this season. I don't know if he's going to make an all-rookie team because he's a role player. And a lot of the other rookies that, you know, you only get 10 spots. They're usually starters or getting a lot of shot attempts. He is a, he has been plug and play. It's been pretty good. I mean, again, this is a playoff game. He played 15 minutes in this one, and they were a quality 15. And again, a series does not start until the role team wins a game. So the Denver Nuggets just took care of business. Great. Now they got to go to Phoenix and at least get one. And I'm scared for the Phoenix Suns, y'all. I'm going to be real. I'm scared for them. Because they even tried to play the numbers game. The, the main reason why I was like, you know, we, we talked about this, that the Suns have the star pair, obviously, with Kevin and Devin. I didn't even think about that. Devin has been uh, one of the best players in the playoffs behind probably Jimmy Butler. He's probably number two. And Kevin Durant is Kevin Durant, right? That alone is good enough for a lot of people to believe you are a contender. You can win any series. But we talked about it as a numbers game that three is greater than two. And the different Nuggets going to get a lot of three-point shots up. And they got people like Jamal Murray. They have people like KCP and, and, and other people that hit their shots. And the Phoenix Suns have notoriously not been a good Three-point shooting team, they don't get up attempts, and they don't get to the basket to draw fouls. Where today, they attempted 31 three-pointers, and I was proud of it. Kevin Durant himself attempted 12, but it's different. Because a lot of the situations where the Denver Nuggets are attempting, they're 27. This is a rock fest tonight. But they're 27, and a lot of cases, it's catch and shoot. Other than Jamal Murray, who's like in the floor a lot of the times, they're catch and shoot opportunities. We felt like the Phoenix Suns, all of theirs was like Kevin noted, knowing that we need to shoot more threes, so I'm going to dribble up court and shoot my three. You know, it's off the dribble, and he's Kevin, and he's going to hit a lot of those, but tonight, 
uh, two for 12. Devin Booker, same situation. He might get a catch and shoot three here now, but for the most part, he's creating for himself. I got, I'm thinking about one on the wing where he held the ball for like six seconds before he attempted the shot, but he attempted it and it went in off glass. Um, <laughs> I think Kevin hit one off glass today too, which is weird. They even, tr they tried to play the numbers game and lost it. And, and one of the things that, that I won't say bother me, but I think we've mentioned this on this channel before, and, and I'm recording this right after the game ended, so I don't know what any of the pressers are talking about. Monty Williams and a lot of Phoenix Suns fans I see on Twitter uh, complain about their lack of free throws. Ladies and gentlemen, they, they're not a team that gets to the basket, and that's where you draw contact usually to get free throws. So they shot five free throws on the night, and there's 21 from the Nuggets. Either way, they came out more aggressive. And I thought that the Suns game plan, when you think about the more three-point shooting, and we saw Josh Okoge, even Damian Lee, these guys got in on the offensive glass. I was like, okay, they switched it up because in game number one, they got killed there. And it didn't matter. And now we, we know, listen, he's my favorite of all time. We know that Chris Paul's body can't do the same things that it was able to do four years ago. And we knew, not knew, but we speculated based on the history that he was going to come up with an injury eventually, and it just happened. And it's a groin injury, which is one of the more lingering issues you can have. And their backup, Cameron Payne, missed a lot of time. He finally came back, and he wasn't good today. So now you might be going into game three on your home court without Chris Paul, and Den Denver has a lot of momentum. So I'm, I'm a little bit worried for the Suns. And again, anything can happen. It's a long series. We've seen teams go up 2-0 and lose all the time. But the Denver Nuggets have looked amazing so far. And that's even with them tonight shooting very poorly from the field. It's been a heck of a series, though. I'll tell you that much. It's been a heck of a series so far, um, even though it's just been two games. I'm excited to see what Phoenix has. Uh, I, I guess I'll see y'all tomorrow. But we got, man, tomorrow is the start of this, the, the series.